joining us right now. First year, former TFC player and a guy that is no stranger in uh, the youth coaching grassroots of Ontario, Marco Retta. Marco, welcome, my friend. Thanks, Anthony. Thanks for having me. Pleasure is all mine. Marco, let's go way back. When you put that jersey on, you represented the city of Toronto and you put uh, that first time on uh, the BMO grounds and, and that game that you played. Talk about the excitement, the atmosphere, everything leading up to it. Uh, it was awesome. Um, to, to, be, to be fair, no, no one, uh, no player really knew what to expect. Um, there was a lot of hype around the city at that time, obviously about the team, but um, you know we didn't we didn't know what to expect in regards to how the fans would react to the team or you know the type of crowd that we'd get or even how many uh, fans that we'd get. Um, but it was absolutely uh, terrific. You know, um, the one memory that sticks out is um, after I, th- I think it was Danny Dicchio scored the first goal. Um, you know, we there was a, a promo from from BMO going around, and they had some seat covers that they were giving out, and they were flying all over the pitch. So, you know, some were flying over my head, and it, it was just it was a sight to see. Yeah, it really was. If you are at the Kia training grounds and you walk through the hallways, that picture's up there somewhere, and it's yes. a fantastic uh, picture to have up there in the hallways. Marco, talk about also. The added extra pressure, being a local guy, a Canadian kid, an Ontario kid, in that room before you walked out, before that first game at BMO Field, and, 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 and I'm sure there was other guys on your squad that were local guys. Talk about that immense pressure that wasn't given to a guy like Danny Dickey and some of the others that were from overseas and in the U.S. of A. Yeah, I, I, you know what, it was, it was a welcome pressure. Um, most of the guys that were local had been playing... Uh, abroad for a number of years so you know we never got a chance to play in front of our family and friends uh that often if if ever um so coming back to play for for tfc was uh you know almost like a blessing where you know finally and i was at the tail end of my career then where you know i could i could uh share what I had accomplished with, with family and friends and, and, and they could cheer me on while I played. Marco, let's talk about the city of Toronto, the way it's grown in leaps and bounds and how it has shown not just them lost the world, what a world-class soccer city it is, whether it was uh, with uh, competitions uh, with uh, the FIFA World Cup many years ago being held there and on and on and on, uh, friendlies with world-class squads coming here you, you've traveled in, in MLS cities when you played, and now you can sit back and say to yourself, wow, I played in a special city with special fans because as we look now, we look at Orlando, the way it has taken off, 50,000 uh, you know, consistently there. It's got to be great to say, I played in Toronto where it was packed and fans were unbelievable. Absolutely. Um, I think TFC should be uh, given a lot of credit for sort of jump-starting a almost i don't know if revolution is a word but uh you know a, a change in, in in mls for sure uh, in regards to fan interaction the type of fans that came to games um you know the way that fans were involved in the matches in regards to chanting and celebrating and and songs and all that uh, i don't know if it had been seen in mls certainly not on the scale that it that it had been in toronto uh when they began and you know that led to um, you know some more soccer specific stadiums being built. Kansas City's coming to mind, and, and Colorado, um, which weren't around. Um, quite frankly, they weren't around back when I was playing. So you know, and now there's new franchises where the fan base is huge, like a, like a Portland, for instance. Um, so yeah, I think TFC deserves credit for uh, sort of changing. The, the sort of culture and atmosphere in, at MLS games, for sure. Let me ask you this, Marco. MLS and E takes a lot of uh, flack, a lot of hits, but I'm one to defend them, uh, especially when it comes to TFC and lately with the Toronto Maple Leafs, who they own as well. They put their money uh, where their mouth is. They are only told to sign the checks. They've done that. Jovinko, Bradley, Altidore, Defoe, on and on. They have done that. And I think they take a lot of flack in, in many ways, and I don't think it's flack that they should be taking. You as a player in that first year, did you ever, ever experience anyone from ownership coming down into the locker room trying to meddle in your business as a player? Never. Uh, never. Uh, it, was, it was the soccer people. I think they, they let the soccer people handle it. 
Um, they, they treat the players quite, quite well. Um, you know, they treated us very, very well that first year. It was a place where players wanted to come and play. Um, and I, I, I think that's still true today. Uh, it's a first class organization. Um, they take a lot of, uh, heat because the teams haven't been doing so well. Um, you know, hopefully that's changing because I agree with you. They, they've put in a lot of money into, uh, TFC in particular in regards to player signings. Um, a new stadium, almost new, but, uh, certainly renovated. Um, and a lot of that has been to, um, to make the product on the field better and to make the product uh, better for uh, fans, you know, give fans more pleasure watching matches. Marco, let's talk about the home opener against FC Dallas. We had Chris Seitz on, their goalkeeper. They're a young squad. They have about three or four veterans. They're hungry. They're motivated uh, to get past where they were last year in the playoffs to get to the final and win it all. This will be a tough challenge uh, for TFC uh, coming home for the first game being on the road a very, very long time. Let's talk about the keys to success. I believe TFC needs to start off early, early with a goal to settle themselves down and get the crowd into it. But if they give up one, watch out. It could turn ugly. Yeah, absolutely. One, I, I, I've got to say hats off to uh, you know everyone involved in regards to the renovation of the uh, stadium because it, lo- it looks absolutely fantastic. I've, I've driven by it the last two weeks every night on the way home from training myself and and the lights are on and you can see the grass and it looks very sharp um you know and i'm in i'm in awe to be to be honest I, i'm i'm proud that that our city has a has a stadium that that looks like that um and i think the fans will enjoy it but i agree tfc needs to get get off to a quick start on um on saturday and they they have to set the tone for the match um you know they've got to dictate play rather than dallas coming in uh, and dictating the tempo of the game themselves. Uh, uh, Dallas has a number of attacking players. Castillo comes to mind where, you know, he's dangerous. Uh, they've got to be aware of, of where he is at all times on the pitch because, you know, he'll, he'll burn you. Um, but I think TFC is in quite good form right now, so I, I'm sure a result will come on Saturday. Marco, you're a former a defender and a guy that uh, left it all out there. You gave it 110%. Uh, a passion, energy, desire, and I'm seeing this from this back line this year from TFC where I've never seen it uh, in the last three or four years. Uh, Stephen Betashore, a, a wonderful addition from the Vancouver Whitecaps. We're seeing it from Drew Moore, a leader on and off the field. He's calming and, and, and a real good influence on the young guys. You, you got Moro playing well. Damien Perkis to me is the unsung hero. Talk about how important it is to have a line like that playing in front of Clint Irwin, who is going to be, for me, one of the top two goalkeepers, one that's all said and done this season. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it uh, boils down, one, they've, they've got continuity and stability. I think this, the same back four has started every match, I think, bar one when, when Drew Moore was ill uh, for one game. Um, they've got steady players, all four of them across the, the back. They're just steady. They don't make many mistakes. Um and it seems that, that this year, uh, and Vanny's pointed it out in the media several times, is that they're, they're not panicking TFC if they go down a goal or things aren't going uh, their way in the, the early moments of the match. They're not panicking. They, they're sticking with the game plan. Um, and, you know, eventually you see that they'll, they start nicking a goal at the end of matches rather than the other way around. And that, that's sort of been the Achilles heel for TFC at the... You know, for the last seven, eight years, is is we sort of uh, they become impatient and uh, and they're the ones losing games at the end. Um, you know, and this year they've they've showed a little bit more maturity, let's say, uh, as a team. And uh, and I think Vanny's got to take credit for that. You know, because it, it's certainly different than than what it's been in the past. And and they're the ones coming out on top and getting that late goal to uh, to come out with a victory or even a result at the end. Marco, just before we let you go, you're, you're a youth coach. You spent a, a ton of time uh, coaching the youngsters here in southern Ontario. Uh, you've traveled this country. I'm all for giving a spot for Canadian players on an MLS squad, only if they earn. I, I, I got to tell you, I don't want to hear because they're Canadian, they deserve a spot instantly. No. So to me, the question is to you this, Marco. I've seen... You know, some of our young Canadian guys struggle this year. Ashton Morgan getting basically next to nothing in playing time. Jonathan Osorio, who you know well, if we put the cards on the table, I don't think he started out the way he'd like to start out. So to me, 
look, I don't care if you're a Canadian or not. If you're not playing well, you shouldn't start. Agree or disagree? Uh, agree. Uh, agree in regards to to earning a, a spot in the starting eleven. I, I agree 100% with that. I think there's good Canadian players out there, and I've said this before, probably on your show, is that you know Canadian soccer will eventually start changing when you know Osorio is a perennial All Star, when Russell Tybert is a perennial All Star, when Kyle Aaron. Uh, has, you know, 20 goal seasons in Serie A or La Liga. Uh, so agree that those players that are currently in MLS, they've got to earn their spot week in, week out. The, the argument that I've made is that some of the fringe players, you know, your 22, 23-year-old uh, U.S. players that come out of college that are the 16th, 17th, 18th man on the roster, I think there's Canadian players that are just as good as them. And, you know, I'd rather see those Canadian players get a shot to earn uh, a call into the first 11 rather than a 23 or 24, excuse me, 24-year-old American player. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And lastly, in 10 seconds or less, I'm sure that they do involve you, uh, but I'm not 100% sure as a former TFC and alumni. Do they stay in touch with you? Do they invite you and your family out to games? Have they kept in contact with you since you've retired? Uh, no, no, oh, they, wow. they haven't. Uh, and that, that's fine. I, I've, life, life goes on, Anthony, as, as I'm sure you're well aware. Uh, I, I want to see TFC do do well. I think it's great for soccer in Toronto, and I think it's it's great for soccer in uh, Canada. So. I'll, I won't be at the stadium on, on Saturday, but uh, I'll definitely be cheering them on. Well, that's great on you to do so, and that's unfortunate they haven't reached out. But I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a lot of TFC guys uh, in that office listen to our show. Now that they're going to hear this, I'm pretty sure that a phone call will be made or an email to Marco Retta to invite you and your family out. I'll guarantee you that. Marco, thank you so much for making time. Enjoy the game on the weekend, my friend. Thanks, Anthony. Stay well.